And the reason as follows Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane uh -huh. And said unto the disciples Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder uh -huh. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee And began to be sorrowful and very heavy Then said he unto them My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death Tarry ye here and watch with me and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, What, could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. And we're going to take for a topic this morning is the end result is worth the process. The end result is worth the process. We all know that this is right before Judas betrayed Jesus. And Jesus needed to get away from
from the usual. He needed to get away from what had become the norm to him because now he was feeling that it was time for him to do what he came to do. And him as a man, his flesh was weak because it was something that he had not experienced before. It was something that even though he understood that this is what I came to do, I really don't want to do this right now because of what I see coming. Now the 36th verse says he he began to go to a place called Gethsemane, which that means a place or occasion of great mental or spiritual suffering. So when he went there, he went there because he knew that it was time for his suffering. Now, a lot of us, we get to a place where we know what's there, but we aren't prepared for what's there. So the reason why we go there is because we need to gain strength. Moving on, the 37th verse says, and he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, which would be James and John. I don't find this ironic or funny, but the last message I preached, we talked about how Jesus started his ministry with Peter, James, and John. Now it's time for Jesus to end it all. And he take with him Peter, James, and John. The reason for that is because he started with them. Why? Because they understood who he was and they knew the power of him from the beginning. Now when it's time for him to end the ministry, he needed somebody with him that understood what he was there to do. Now granted, we understand that they slept through the entire time of him praying, but the mere fact of having somebody there that had faith was enough for him to go a little further. Now the 38th verse talks about how him as a man, he could not handle it. As a man, he said, my soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. He understood his purpose and why he was there, but that didn't stop him from being sorrowful. That didn't stop him from hurting. That didn't stop him from feeling the pain of what was to come. 39th verse says, And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Yes. Now when the Bible say he went a little further, they're talking about more than spirit, more than physical. Yes. Because they could have followed him physically where he was going. But spiritually and mentally, the anguish that he was about to experience, no man could go there with him. That's why Peter, James, and John weren't able to stay awake. One, because it wasn't time for their suffering. So they really weren't concerned about anything. They didn't understand the magnitude of danger that they were in and what was about to become of them. But Jesus began to go up further and began to say, if it be possible, remove this cup. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will. And what we have to understand about the cup is that the cup was threefold. It was threefold, which means it contained the sin penalty, the separation from his father, and death. So when he experienced the cup, he experienced the three things that will hurt him the most because it was something that he he didn't have to experience it. Jesus didn't have to experience death. He was already in heaven, sitting on the right hand side of the Father, sitting in glory. He didn't have to experience separation from his Father because he was right there. He didn't have to experience sin. Why? Because he was in a place that was perfect. He was in a place that had no sin. And now it is time for him to experience something that he never experienced before. Yes, yes, yes. Glory. Yes. Now we understand that Jesus prayed three times. Three times Jesus prayed. Yes. And God began to talk to me. So I began to study it. And the first time he prayed, I can imagine yes. that he could see Judas mm. on the way to betray him. Yes. And he went back 
saw his disciples asleep yes. and he began to wake them up and it says he went away again the second time and prayed saying oh my father if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it yes. thou will be done yes. and he came again and found them asleep again yes. for their eyes were heavy they were still sleeping yes. they were still sleeping I'm, I'm getting there yes. 44th verse and he left them and went away again and prayed the third time saying the same words yes. then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them yes. sleep on now and take your rest yes. take your rest first time he prayed he could see Judas betraying him yes. and he went back and he began to tell him in between that time Y'all y'all need to pray so that you don't enter into temptation. Right. Now we may not have understood what he was saying about entering into temptation, but he went away again and prayed a second time. Now if you just if you still got your Bibles, I need you to go down to the 51st verse. Read the 51st verse. Go down to the 51st verse. We we getting there. We getting where we want to go. The 51st verse. I believe it's the 51st verse. I'm sorry, 56. Go to 56. And I'm gonna read it for you. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. He told them to pray that they entered not into temptation. Why? Because he foresaw them abandoning him. At the moment that he needed somebody to be there with him, he could see them leaving. Why? Because they weren't ready to experience what he had. Now Jesus Jesus understood. He already knew that this has to happen for me to get to the place that I came to go. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor, this has got to happen. This is necessary to happen for me to get where I need to go. Now Jesus understood. He understood that when I get here there are three things that's going to happen to me first Judas is going to betray me he's going to betray me I'm going to be turned over into the hands of sinners and then my boys are going to abandon me and now I'm in a place where I I'm in a place where I'm not used to being why because everywhere I went I had my disciples with me everywhere I went I had strength following me everywhere I went I had reinforcements now at the moment that I need friends. I'm by myself. Some of us get to a place where we feel we're out of the most Where we feel like we're all alone. But you ought to say that this is by design. This is necessary for me to be by myself. Why is it necessary for me to be alone? Because when I'm alone, I don't depend on people. But now I turn to the strength of God. You ought to look at your name and say, name now is the time to lean on Jesus. I've been done the most. I've been depending on people for too long. But now is my chance and my opportunity to try Jesus. He understood what was going to happen. That's why he began to pray three times because each time he prayed, something was revealed to him. So he had to go back again and say it over again Father, if it's your will, let me drink this cup. I really don't want to do it, but it's necessary. I really don't want to drink it, but if I don't drink it, they don't have a chance at life. Ooh, Holy Ghost, talk to us. We have got to understand the magnitude of what Jesus did for us. He began to. They began to betray him. Judas betrayed him. The other eleven left him. Glory to God. They left him. And Jesus was left alone with the sinners. And the reason why the disciples left him was because they were unaware of the danger that they were in. Not the danger of them going with Jesus. 
the danger of leaving Jesus. Let me say that again. They were unaware of the danger of not going with him, but leaving him. Too many times, we don't understand the danger when we leave Jesus. I'm not talking about leaving the church. I'm talking about leaving Jesus. The church is just four walls that's designated as a place of worship. Y'all understand what I'm saying? The church, this building, this, this suite that we're in, is designated as a place of worship. But when you get with Jesus, the church don't become four walls, but it comes It becomes who you are. And you can say, I am the church. And you don't ever have to worry about leaving Jesus. Why? Because you got the church in you. You want to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you understand what you're saying? When you call yourself the church, when you call yourself the church, you call yourself power. When you call yourself the church, you call yourself joy. When you call yourself the church, you call yourself peace. So there's no reason for me to be afraid. Why? Because he is with me. They were, they were unaware of the danger that they were in. But then again, Jesus understood that it's not their time right now. So it's okay for them to sleep. Because this isn't about them. This is about me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this isn't about you. But it's about me right now. Why do you think Jesus, after he went and, and woke them up and told them, say, you, you can pray with me after the second time. Say, you can pray with me again. And he left. And when he came back, he didn't wake them up to pray again. But he woke them up for them to escape. Y'all yes, yes, yes. follow me? What would that verse say, Bishop? The verse say. Let me, let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. It's the 46 verse. It says, rise. Let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doeth betray me. Too many times we think people coming for us. We, we, we think we think it's all about us. We think every time they open their mouth, we think they talk about us. Every time they post something on Facebook, we think they talk about us. Every time they hashtag something on Instagram, we think they talk about us. But this was not about the disciples. This was about Jesus. But Jesus understood that I can't leave them in here sleeping. I need them to wake up. Come on, come on. I need them to wake up. Why do I need them to wake up? I need them to wake up. Because one of them got to do something so they can still see that I am who I am. Just because I'm in the midst of sinners, that don't change who I am. How did, the most, how did Jesus display this? He displayed it when he woke them up. And they came to take Jesus. And Peter began to cut off the ear of the guard. And Jesus picked it up and put it back on. And said, don't worry about it, Peter. I got this. Oh, holy speak to us in this place. Jesus began to explain to him that don't fight for me but let me fight for you. Let me, let me fight for you. I just need you to live for me and I'll fight for you. Why? 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 why, why? Because if I allow you to keep me from my destiny, you won't live anyway. Understood that I cannot allow anybody, even my friends, to keep me from my destiny. Somebody should have called that boss. You should have called home to that right there. I will not let anybody, including my friends, keep me from my destiny. It's not your enemies that's going to do it, it's going to be your friends. The enemy is doing what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to talk about you. They're supposed to stab you in the back. They're supposed to be two-faced. They're supposed to be jealous. But it's those friends that you're trying to fit in with. It's those friends that's pushing your head up. It's 
those friends that you try to keep up with that's going to keep you going to your destiny. It's those friends that's always coming to your defense that's going to mess you up. Yes, Peter had good intentions. He had good intentions, but in one time to fight. He thought he was doing something real good for Jesus. But in one time to fight. Why? Because that's not how Jesus fight. Jesus don't fight throwing punches, cutting people up, letting them cut their ears off and stuff. That's not how Jesus fight. The Bible say, through love and kindness, have I drawn thee. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to kill you with love. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to return evil for evil. But as evil as you want to be, I'm still be good. Why? Because my good will outweigh your evil any day. Not only will my good outweigh your evil, but my good will keep me from being evil. It's not all about getting even, but understand that when you get even, you die. When you get even, you kill yourself out. When you get even, you put yourself in the same boat as a person that you call yourself getting even with. And what we have to understand is when we get even, we lose more than what they ever gain. Why? Because you have more to lose than they do. 